welcome back. Are you still bottling your beers? If you are, why are you doing that? Here's a quick video that I'm going to do about kegging, my short process as to kegging, why it's a little bit better than bottling, uh, and why you can save all the time doing it. So I've got the SS Brewtech 7 Gal Chronicle. You can pressure transfer with the little pressure transfer lid and hose and tri clamp that go on the top of there. Am I going to do it? No, because it would be easier if I can do it in the fridge. I can't do it in the fridge because look at all the headspace I don't have. So because of that, um, I can't transfer into the keg just here. So I need to make sure my gal chronicle, seven gal chronicle is higher than my keg. So I'm going to have to take it out and put it into the kitchen. Yes, the washing machine's going. Sorry for that. It likes to have a part in the shows. So this is a Dunkel that's been uh, cold crashing at about six degrees. Tried to make it one degree. The fridge is crap. Apologies. I'm going to take it out, put it in there and start transferring. It's not going to be under pressure. Doesn't really matter. Yes, there's a, a CO2 headspace in it. Brownian motion, I believe, says that there can be transfer of particle, moving particles to still particles. And so essentially air will mix with your CO2 and you'll have oxygen contacting the beer. How likely is it over the space of 10 minutes? Not very. Moving on. Defrosting chicken not required for the purposes of this video. You've got two ports on your keg. Gas in, beer out. For the purposes of the start of this, I've cleaned and sanitized the keg. I did that after the last time I've used it. I've brought it out of storage. I've purged the CO2. I've uh, drained the last little bit of fluid in it. Uh, I've cleaned both my valves. I've flushed it again with um, StarSan. I've connected up both the quick disconnects. For the purposes of this, I'm going to put gas in the beer out post because the beer out post goes right to the very bottom of the keg, whereas the gas in post only does the first little inch or so. Why does that matter? Because I don't want the CO2 mixing with the air and have to keep purging it with lots of CO2. I want the CO2, which is heavier, to start from the bottom and push the air out from the top. Is that the best way of doing it? Probably not. You can fill the keg up with star sand and push it out that way. That way you know you've not got any oxygen in the keg. Can I be asked? No. It's good enough. So I was attempting to do some sort of a closed loop transfer, which is basically where you have the hose attached to your outpost and a uh, quick disconnect on one of your in posts, ideally the, uh, the beer outpost, uh, and you drop the beer to the very bottom of the keg, uh, the CO2 or the star sound that you have in there gets pushed out as the beer gets pushed in, drawn by gravity or pushed by CO2 connected to the um, pressure transfer that you've got connected to the top. Do you need to do that? Yeah, not really. Is it ideal? Yeah, probably. Is this process the best? Yeah, not at all. So is this what I'm doing? Yeah, do I care? Not really. Is it going to affect the beer quality at the end? Oh, there may be a marginal difference. However, I can purge any additional oxygen that's getting in there out with the CO2 that I'm blowing around the room. I can pull that in there and push all the rest of the shit out. That'll help somewhat. Is it perfect? No, not at all. Does it matter? Probably not really. And so, and so, as the beer continues to transfer, I can spend time watching the chicken defrost, or reading a book, or drinking a cup of tea, or 
cleaning some other bits or getting told what I should be doing next by the missus. All perfect things, very legitimate things you could be doing. So we'll come back when the beer's not in there anymore, it's in there. All right. Okay, I've now got the beer from the fermenter into the keg. That whole process took 11 minutes worth of transfer, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes worth of setup. Um, trying not to talk over the open keg, so now I'm going to put a lid on it. So there we go, that's a Munich Dunkel. It's not the best light for you to be able to see it. It is a light brown, light red, maybe. It's still a little bit hazy with having to move the fermenter to get in here. A lot of jiggling around. Uh, I'm probably going to put last little bit of fennings through the keg, however. That's going to be spot on. There you go, that is 40 minutes worth of work, beer from the fermenter into the keg, force carved. And it's pretty much there. Just needs a bit of a lager, a bit of a conditioning. It's already tasting smashing, gonna drink a lot of that. Cheers guys, all the best.